Tech Revision with Mrs. Swanee Pooh. <laughs> Hi everyone, in this video we are going to go over the enhancement of metals. So you may have watched enhan enhancement of polymers, enhancement of woods. So this is how you can enhance metals and this involves the use of heat to change the properties of the metal. So the things that we're going to have a look at are um, something called work hardening, which is where, well, I'll explain it later, where you, when you're basically hitting or hammering or bending metal and how it becomes harder and harder and harder until it fractures. We talk about annealing, the use of heat to make it softer. Uh, we're going to very quickly talk about case hardening, um, hardening and tempering uh, metal. So these all involve some kind of heat in a way to change the malleability of the metal. So the first thing we're going to talk about, first thing to kind of get your head around, is that metals are made up of crystals. So you can kind of see there's two examples here. Um, depending on how the size, uh, or depending on the size and how tightly packed these crystals are, alters the properties of the metal. So this metal on the left, you can see that the crystals are very, very small and tightly packed. This would be quite a hard metal. On this side, you can see that the crystals are really quite big. This would be a more malleable metal. So firstly, we're going to talk about this thing called uh, work hardening. So uh, normally I do this with a sample of copper. Um, but if you imagine, we've all done this at school where you've had like a pen lid or a metal paper clip and you've bent it and keep bending it, keep, keep bending it, keep bending it. And what happens is it will eventually fracture uh, and break. And this is because as you are bending it, the crystals in the metal are distorted and pushed together. And basically it means, say, for example, we were bending this copper. In a certain section, it will get harder and harder and harder. The crystals get closer and closer together and then it will uh, fracture. Uh, the metal can crack. So, um, for example, imagine you are a, a blacksmith and you were making a copper bracelet. So say that you were using this copper to make it into a bracelet. And what you've been doing is you've been shaping it, forming it, maybe hammering it to give it texture and things like that. And what can happen is it can become work hardened, which means it's become quite hard, difficult to bend, difficult to indent. Now, what you can do if you are working on the metal and still want to work on it is you can remove this effect of work hardening by doing something called annealing. So when you anneal something, it basically means to heat it up to a certain temperature or a certain colour. So, for example, with copy, copper, you are, you are advised when you're annealing it to heat it up to a cherry red colour. And what happens there is the crystals uh, spread out, they grow again, and it makes the metal softer and more malleable and more ductile again. So say, for example, you were trying to make this kind of bracelet like this and you'd work hardened it, you can anneal it. And then because you've done that, it's then softer again for you to be able to work on it again and create the shape that you want. So that's what annealing is used for. It's used during the process of shaping and forming metal when you want to get it back to a softer state so that you can keep working on it. That's what annealing is. Right, this is called case hardening. So case hardening is uh, quite interesting actually. It allows you to create kind of uh, a product that would have um, two very important types of properties. So why would you bother to case harden? Well, you do that so that you can get a casing or an outside uh, surface that is very, very, very hard. But the inner core of the product remains a little bit softer. So that means that this kind of product can withstand shock. It can withstand, um, it can be more tough. So it's not going to be too brittle. So that's quite a desirable property for a lot of products. Um, this is normally used on low carbon steel, where there isn't very much carbon in the product to begin with. And I'm going to show you a quick video of this afterwards, but I'll just go through the steps very, very quickly. 
So sometimes it can use on smaller products or larger products like the one here, but carburizing um, changes the composition, the chemical composition of the surface of the low carbon steel. It allows it to absorb more carbon. The, the steel is placed in a box, a ceramic box obviously uh, is very good at withstanding high heat. A layer of carbon is added and in the video you'll see that they actually just use like briquettes from like a barbecue crushed up. It's heated to a certain uh, temperature. Uh, the example here is 930 to 950. I think the one on the video is in Fahrenheit, so it's slightly higher. Um, and what happens is the carbon atoms, they diffuse into the surface. And if you imagine this is our little block of um, low carbon steel, and what happens is it builds up a layer of carbon around the outside that is very, very, very hard. The longer you do it, the thicker the carbon will get around the outside, but the inner bit is still nice and soft. And once you quench that in water, so this will obviously like that, this will seal the surface around the outside and maintain those properties. So I'm going to show you that video now. The video runs a bit weird because I've cut it down, um, so bear with it, but it shows the process quite well. Lay down about an inch of carbonaceous material in a steel box with a tight-fitting lid. Yes, we really are using broken up charcoal briquettes because it actually works pretty well. Arrange the blocks so that they're not touching each other or the box. Go ahead and put in one or two pieces of 1018 steel scrap so we can test the hardness later without putting divots in the finished parts. Then pour enough carbon on top of the blocks to cover them by at least one inch. Put the lid on top of the box and fill in any gaps with fire clay or refractory mortar to form an airtight seal. Now it's time to load the box into the cold furnace. We'll leave the box in the furnace to carburize for eight hours. But inside the furnace, there's a bit of science magic happening. Carbon-rich gas comes in contact with the metal surface, breaks down, and some amount of free carbon is dissolved into the hot steel. Time, temperature, and the composition of the atmosphere all affect the rate at which carbon is absorbed and how deeply it penetrates into the steel. After eight hours at 1700 degrees, the carbon should penetrate 1 16th of an inch into the part. Remove the carburized parts. They're still soft right now, but the finished parts will have a tough, low carbon core and a hardened, high carbon surface layer called a case. This is because the carbon only dissolved to a certain depth, so the hardening process will only affect the outsides of the parts. That's what makes so, case hardening, it's useful for objects that need to be hard on the uh, exterior to endure wear and tear, but soft internally to withstand shock. So things like firearms, camshaft, uh, camshafts in cars, uh, knives, swords, special purpose components, and horseshoes, quite a good example of something that is traditionally case hardened. Now, um, this is just one example of how to create a, um, a hard surface on the outside. Remember, this is for low carbon steel. Okay, sometimes called mild steel. Next thing I'm going to talk to you very quickly about, and I'm going to show you again another short little video, is hardening and tempering. Now, this is used on medium and high carbon steels. So not low carbon steel, steels that already have a higher carbon content than low carbon steel. So they are, they are heated, sorry, to alter their crystalline structure, just like we spoke about in that first 
uh, slide. They are held at a given temperature for a set time. So it's very, very particular in terms of uh, what temperature you heat it to, how long you hold it at that temperature. Um, and when you held it at that temperature for a set time, they are then quenched, basically dunked in water or oil or sometimes like a salt water. So this means on the outside of the metal, you have a very, very hard uh, surface, very, very hard surface on the outside. But in contrast to low carbon steel, this can actually make the metal quite brittle. So this means that the whole thing, if you're not careful, could snap quite easily. So what they do with medium and high carbon steels to get the surface to be softer again, or not the surface, sorry, the interior to be softer again, they do something called tempering. And it just reduces a little bit of the brittleness um, and helps to increase the toughness of the, of the metal. So again, you heat the metal to a certain color. And in the video I'm gonna show you, you'll see that he heats it to like a straw color and he lets that cool and that gives that nice combination of a ridiculously hard outer um, surface good for like it's a lathe tool that he's making in the video so perfect for that but because it's been tempered it has a softer inside meaning it's not going to be too brittle and it's going to be quite tough All right here's the video Let's see what you think I then heated the cutter to a red heat and quenched it in oil. At this point the steel is glass hard and a file just skates over it, but it's too brittle for use, it needs to be tempered. So I gave it a quick rub on the stone to bring up a shiny surface and now I can see the colour change at the cutting edge as I temper it. I'm aiming for a light straw colour. The cutter is now both tough and hard and just needs some final sharpening. <laughs> 